I don't know where this footage is, but mm. I remember I interviewed Charlie Murphy. Yeah. Like, it's my man. A long, that was long my time man. ago. Yeah, shout out to Charlie. Real, Charlie really, really Murphy, cool man. dude. And I remember, I don't know where this tape is, because mm-hmm. I never put this out. We were in Jersey at like a little cafe. Right. And I'm like, do you think Eddie will ever come back and do another stand up? And he said, probably not. I said, really, why? He goes, well, because if he tried to do it, if he tried to jump back in, he would be whack. He'd have to spend about a year or more on the stand-up circuit getting his chops back. Yeah, he hasn't done a fucking stand-up in like in 30, 30 years. years. Like, man, when, I, when I'm on stage for three days, I'm like, oh, man. Because stand-up, is, it's a really strange thing. Stand-up a is a thing... You have to be on, on it a lot. Like it's just a, because it's so like it's it's so difficult and so and to be present and you you gotta you gotta be doing it a couple times a week. Yeah, I'm I'm not even bullshitting you. Yeah, you know it's scary shit. Adam Sandler started to get back into it. And he was frightened. I remember. Well, I, I can tell you, and I'm not gonna say any names, yeah. but when I when I was hanging out with you the other night, mm-hmm. I saw a very big difference between the different stand up comedians. Mm. I saw a world of difference and it was like wow like uh, we are not all equal here <laughs> like on this stage like and it some don't of matter. these motherfuckers are the ones that got a, they got more specials than you yeah and, and you're it, blowing them off the motherfucking stage and they're like on their third special yeah that's but they but they found a way to make the lot of, and a lot of these comics are doing ted talks <laughs> you know yeah I, i'm thinking we should reverse it why don't we go to ted talk and do a special do an actual comedy special on a TED, a Ted talk. talk. Because it seems like they're doing TED Talks on these Netflix so, specials. do you think that Eddie will come back and kill it? Or do you think he's just going to take his check and it'll be like, all right. Well, I don't think they're going to give him a check and he, he not do nothing. He has to do something. Well, you know, 70... 70 Eddie Murphy should be able to, I, Listen, Eddie Murphy, I don't give a fuck what he does. He can do whatever the fuck he wants. He's the greatest. He's the baddest motherfucker on the planet. But I think that Eddie Murphy... I think that just... He, Ego wise and reputation wise, because the last special he did was in '87 was Raw. Yeah, I mean that's a long that's that's eras. '87, thirty years, thirty two, thirty years. years going through the '90s. You didn't do shit. The early 2000s, you, you didn't, didn't do, do shit. shit. That's not and and he, ten kids later, maybe ten nine ten kids later. I would I think, but my thing is this, and I hope Eddie Murphy maybe watches this. I think that I I know it'll be smart for him. Talk about Charlie, do stories about Charlie. I mean, he should talk about, like, you know, talk about his children. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Do stuff about his children. Do stuff about, like, you know, the shit that he used to talk about. I, I think that he can do all of that. Like, all the shit that he's been through. You know what I mean? He could talk about some of the movies that he that weren't as good as he thought they would be. He could talk about, he's like, man, what the fuck was Pluto Nash, man? What the <laughs> fuck was that, man? I'm sorry. I apologize, man. I apologize for that. That was some... That was some bullshit. That was some bullshit. I'm sorry, but I had to get a check, man. Fuck you. Suck my dick. You know? But you know what I mean? I think that if he does it, he he I don't think he should rush it. I think he should spend at least one to two years on coning his skill. Because listen, he's gonna have to show up to clubs. They're gonna go crazy. I think they should set up private place things for him. I think he should work on his shit. He should surround himself with other comics. Because, you know, every comic's going to be like, dude, I'll write for you for free. You're <laughs> right. Eddie Murphy. And he knows plenty of comedians. And I already know the motherfuckers that are going to be around him. But he should have a, a, a think tank of people with him. Because Eddie Murphy is a natural funny. And he's probably one of the most talented human beings on the planet. He can do voices. He can do... I, it, did you see him do the Sammy Davis thing? When he's yeah. the, He's he's like listen, babe. He's fantastic. <laughs> he can change his voice. He should do that. He should do voice changes. He do character stuff. I think he should work on a nice little. Uh, he should work on a nice little act. But I think he should go to the clubs and he needs yeah. to work his chops out for at least two a year or two. Don't do anything yet. Right? Because I looked at some of his worst movies. A thousand words. Remember that one? Oh, with the trees and that. Yeah. yeah. Crap. I, I thought Pluto, Metro Pluto a, Nash. I think Metro was a sleeper movie. Metro was pretty damn good. Uh, he was serious in that movie. Eddie Murphy can do serious roles, and I'm looking forward to Dolomite. You know, he did Dolomite. He's doing Dolomite. He did Dol- and he yeah. can, he could add, Eddie can act. Eddie can do anything. Yeah, and I think the stand-up part. I'm sure he regrets not like 
continue, like sticking with it, sticking with it. Because Eddie's, the, you know what I mean? It would have been cool if he stuck with it. Even if he didn't do it a lot, if he just went in and out like Seinfeld. Seinfeld still does comedy, comes back. Yeah, he shows up to clubs. He shows up to he sh- clubs. He'll randomly show up to a New York club. And Eddie is bigger than Seinfeld. Like Eddie is, is like another level. You got to understand what Eddie has done for comedy. He literally yeah, made no, you could SNL tell, was number one because Eddie Murphy. Right, you could tell you know? Seinfeld. I mean, Seinfeld even said that Eddie was better than him. Yeah, Eddie's when funny. They did, when yeah. they did that, uh, comedians and cars. Getting but 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 Eddie gave him props and said, Seinfeld, you're like one of the greatest comedians because he is writing wise, just his 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 tech his technique, and he's very wise. Seinfeld's a very wise comedian. You know what I mean? And I've I've gotten advice from Seinfeld, and this is what Seinfeld told me. When I was in my ninth year, because I'm in the documentary Comedian with Jerry Seinfeld, and he said, how long have you been doing comedy? I said, nine years. He said, that's your age in comedy. You're a nine-year-old. Don't ever forget that. <laughs> Bang. Boom. Every comic should know. Whatever year you're in, that's your year in comedy. So if you're five years, shut the fuck up. You're not a fucking professional. I, I, you got a lot of comedians. I got people that go like this. Hey, I'm a comedian. How long have you been doing? A year. You're not a fucking comedian. Because T.K. Kirkland, which... Which is so funny because everybody is making fun of T.K. Kirkland going, yo, I think T.K. taught Jesus how to do comedy too, right? <laughs> yeah, T.K., like there's this TK's weird effect fantastic. that happened it's where f- in all the Vlad TV <laughs> YouTube comments, no matter what it's about, <laughs> yeah. someone will put in T.K. into the story, <laughs> taking credit for whatever T.K. introduced Moses to right. Pharaoh. Right. T.K. would take it. But, it, but I'm sorry to say this, T.K. Kirkland's not lying. I'm sorry, he's not TK man, got me out to New York. Man, let me tell you something. Someone sent me these old NWA videos. And you see them. Screenshots him. of TK in the and actual you video. You see them. I thought it was like the no. DJ or something. No. no, that's TK. That's TK Kirkland. He was T- in the DOC video. TK Kirkland was got in- me my first manager. TK Kirkland, when I got my first manager, I lived in an apartment and with Viola Davis I'm not, when she was at Juilliard. I'm not fucking around. This is 100th and West End. She was my roommate for a couple months. T.K. Kirkland hooked me up with my managers. He got me you, out to You Chicago. and Viola Davis shared an apartment? I Yeah. It was four people, four roommates. Okay. And I had the one room. Viola took me to my room. I'm not even bullshit. I was with my friend Bernadette who was in Love Jones. We, I drove 20 hours from Chicago in a U-Haul truck. And Viola Davis was the first person I met at the door at hmm. 100 in West End. Wow. And now you know I got to get famous because everybody that I meet is more famous to me and my shit. And T.K. Kirkland is real. It's the truth. You know what I mean? T- yeah. I T- mean, you know, yeah, D.L. Hughley would tell me, you know, T.K. Kirkland stories. And- it's the truth. T.K.'s yeah. been around, dude. He's been around. <laughs> they can say whatever the fuck you want, but I love that running joke. Oh, T.K. Oh, okay. T.K. introduced Hulk Hogan to the... <laughs> <laughs> a T to the motherfucking K and get your ass in the car. <laughs> That's my man. That's my I, big brother. I, I love TK. That's man. my big brother. I, I love TK. And I love TK that he's loves popular. me. Like it's a he's, great relationship. And he's honest like, and he's real. And that's what you're gonna get from TK, man.